Samburuland covers a vast area of mountainous, hilly scrubland. It, it's often very dense and you struggle to see animals in it. And so when you're looking for zebras, even though they're black and white and you think there was a lot of contrast, those stripes actually afford them a lot of camouflage and they're hard to spot. We can spend days searching for these animals. And once we catch up with them, it's quite exciting and vital that we stay with them. So we've got sight of a small group of grevy zebra this morning on our first try. And uh, I'm just creeping in quietly with the engine off to see if we can get up close enough to the action where the vet's going to dart the animal without disturbing anything. So we're going to stop just here. You can see the truck just up ahead of us. And hopefully he's got a view of the, the zebras. Looks like they've moved into some pretty deep bush. So our job is to hang back while the vet tries to get a shot, put the dart in, and then he'll call us in to go and assist with the operation. Driving in is an art in itself because you, you've really got to approach them carefully so as not to spook them. So often you'll creep in with the engine off and really what you need to do is get up within 10 or 15 meters so that you can shoot them with a, a dart accurately. And in this case, the female was darted and walked quite a long way away from us. When she came back towards us, she walked straight at the trucks. And one of the guys was able to get out and put a rope around her uh, forelegs and trip her up to take her down gently. Once the animal's on the ground, the team of people will move in and, and start to do specific functions that they're each dedicated to. So in my case, my job is principally just to get the collar on the neck and make sure that it's fitted and turned on and working properly. At the same time, we have vets who uh, monitor her vital signs. We've also got another team of two people who are measuring all sorts of uh, morphometric measurements off, off the zebra's body. Things like the head length, uh, the nose to tail length, the, the size of her hooves, all give us metrics that we can use later on in terms of understanding Grevy zebra better. Well, it's the 28th of April and we've just called it our second zebra for the day. Uh, temperature now is 37 degrees and I think when we had her on the ground it was 35 um, but we're very very pleased because we've got four to do and we've done two before three o'clock in the afternoon so there's every likelihood that we'll get another one today and only have one left for tomorrow the captures will be nice and slow um, controlled I'd say very calm very yeah controlled. good inductions and uh, the collars are on two of the collars are now beating away and transferring their uh, information to Google Earth for us and we can download it from there and analyze it any way we need to. Um, but uh, Richard is with me today and he's from the Grevy Zebra Trust, uh, one of our partners here in Kenya, working in uh, the northern rangelands, specifically on zebras, Grevy yeah, zebras. That's correct, yes. And um, for, for people who are interested in, in Grevy Zebra, um, our partnership with Grevy Zebra Trust is very important to us because they are a permanent presence and uh, Richard spends, what, about three weeks out of every month yeah, in a, this environment. Um, and I have to come and find him under trees and in luggers and riverbeds to, uh, to speak to him. <laughs> Richard, do you want to tell us a bit about the GZT and what, what they're doing up here? Yes, yeah, certainly. I'm Director of Operations for the Trust. Basically, we work with all the communities throughout North Samburu, Rindili and Takana areas. We work with them to promote conservation awareness, um, Grevy Zebra conservation in particular, but all wildlife. We provide assistance to them as well as education. Um, we provide assistance in terms of employment, provision of water in the places that are most dry. So we have very good rapport with the communities and they collect a lot of data for us, pass on sightings, but they also help to protect the, the growers. So they will report to us poaching incidents, yeah. also animals that are injured, things like that. And they've been, they've been instrumental here today because um, we, there are scouts covering Kalama, which is the conservancy we're on. Um, and we've been getting reports from them by the radio to tell us where we're most likely to find zebras. They've been sighted by various scouts on patrol and we've been able to home in on those reports, locate them very quickly and get on with the job um, with a minimum of fuss, which is important for the grevies that we, we want to collar because they get stressed by being captured mm -hmm. and we need to manage that process for the least risk. Yeah. Yeah. What we're doing in key areas, in the driest areas, where there is still some water available for drinking, we're putting out hay and we're putting it out at dusk 20, 30 bales at a time and allowing the wildlife and hopefully the grevies to come and feed. What we're hoping to do is that to make sure that the mares continue lactating so that we don't lose the foals because in the 2009 drought that's what happened. 
there was no recruitment, so we definitely don't want the same happening this year. Yeah, if we lose foals in a population that is only roughly 2,300 strong at the last count, um, that means the next generation is stunted and we effectively reduce the population size. Um, and our big aim at the moment is to stabilize this population across its range and um, try and get it to start increasing again. And a lot of that is down to simple things like the change in the weather. Yeah. Anyway, we're busy spinning blood on the back of the truck to centrifuge it and uh, get the plasma out. People are running tests on oximeters and we need to go back and just uh, chivy everyone along so that we can move on to the next capture later today. Elaine, maybe you can tell us in a few short sentences what, um, what your machine in the fridge is doing. It measures blood gases as well as biochemistry. So it's an aid to, to tell you how well your anaesthetic is working. And also, there's not much data on reference ranges. In wildlife, it's extremely difficult. You can only really get access to wildlife maybe in zoos. Yeah. Very little is known about free-ranging wildlife. So. Right. And the zoo population is, is quite small and very controlled. Yes. Whereas here we've got uh, the original wild genotype to, yes. to work with, which yes. is essential for the conservation of the species. Exactly. The collars we fit to zebras are GPS-enabled radio collars that report their positions hourly via Kenya's extensive mobile network directly to the internet. This allows us to keep a check on them in real time and to analyze the data to determine at a very fine scale how they move through the landscape, where they spend the majority of their time, which water sources are important to them and where they find their food. It's only by protecting these scarce patches of vital habitat that we can hope to conserve gravy zebra for future generations.